in my last lecture I have talked about the first stanza and I have uh, briefly or rather elaborately explained how the poet is trying to draw a comparison between the past and the present. The past referring to the time when he was visiting this particular area that the poem is about for the first time and the present referring to this moment of his second visit and these two moments of visiting this particular place that is actually the subject matter of the poem these two moments and the time intervening these moments five years and the changes that have come about in the poet's perception are the subject matter of the poem memory refers to the past always inevitably one cannot have memory of the future so the act of remembering something is also the act of going back to the past now when we go back to the past in our memory while remembering something while we are in the in the act of remembering we do it consciously and there is also another kind of remembering that is involuntary so you you are reminded of a past event by something that happens accidentally there are two kinds of memory it's voluntary memory and the involuntary memory voluntary memory signifies the idea of remembering something recollecting the past accessing the past across time actively and involuntary memory is something that we do not have control over it refers to the experience or the phenomenon of going back to the past or being taken to the past involuntarily in the presence of something some kind of stimulus so if you ask what kind of memory is in operation in this particular poem wordsworth since he has chosen to come to this place after five years is uh, or must also take into account that his visit will bring back certain memories so it's a conscious decision and so the memory the act of memorizing or the act of remembering is conscious or voluntary but we also at the same time cannot rule out the possibility of the poet being in a certain place and remembering something some things involuntarily things that are that he is reminded by reminded of by certain things things that have changed things that have changed in appearance so also have a kind of contrast between things that have changed and things which are beyond change things which are impermeable or things which are impervious to time or change as i have already discussed this is a poem about transformation transformation of the poetic vision transformation of the poet's consciousness the growth of the poet's mind let's use the word growth because transformation may signify a process which is either bad or good so the process of transformation that wordsworth is talking about here is a good transformation where the poet has realized certain things about life about nature about his personal connection with this place and how it has helped him in lonely times while he has been away from this place consciousness of a creative kind receives absorbs impressions and processes those impressions into a profounder truth that will that allows him to sail through times which are difficult times which are hostile to the act of philosophizing perhaps because philosophy is seen as something that can provide consolation comfort it is an act which brings about peace of mind it also unites it unites a being with another being that is the kind of philosophy that wordsworth believes in and propagates through his poetry in hours of weariness sensation sweet felt in the blood and felt along the heart and passing even into my purer mind with tranquil restoration feelings too of unremembered pleasure such perhaps as have no slight or trivial influence on that best portion of a good man's life the reference to a good man's life is important here because it opens up philosophical questions again who is a good man the word good is a subjective word and at the same time it is a it is 
it is an ethical term good when we when we define something as good we take it to be a philosophical description of that thing because as you know as i have discussed one of the main branches of philosophy is ethics and we find philosophers who are of the opinion who argue that ethics is the first philosophy so the term the, the expression good man is essentially a philosophical notion a good man's life perhaps he is talking about the platonic eudaimonia a just life as i have pointed out in the last lecture a just life lived in accordance with ethical virtues and wordsworth also discusses the influence that nature possibly has on human acts of kindness acts of love when he talks about his little nameless unremembered acts of kindness and of love not great achievements wordsworth is not talking about memorials he is not talking about achievements on the public scale on the on a large scale he is talking about uh, simple acts of kindness being kind to people in general and not asking anything in return selfless acts acts which one carries out despite knowing that those acts might be forgotten it says that in order to understand nature you have to be nature and once you have achieved that union with nature nature will not leave you you will become nature wherever you go and therefore after a certain amount of time has passed after you are physically separated from nature after you have moved on to other places for example cities or urban setups urban settings you are still in the midst of nature because your vision has been transformed by natural providence natural bounty and this is the experience that wordsworth is describing when he says in hours of weariness sensation sweet felt in the blood and felt along the heart and passing even into my pure mind so what wordsworth is trying to say is the power of nature is such that it impacts when you are in contact with it it impacts your entire being you feel it in your blood you feel it along your heart and it even passes into your purer mind and all this is revived when you are trying to just sit back relax in a tranquil mood all these images are restored and not only these images the sounds of nature but also feelings deep feelings of unremembered pleasure it is very strange when you remember the feeling of pleasure but you do not know the source or the stimulus that caused the pleasure to happen or caused you to feel that pleasure in the first place so you remember the feeling but you have forgotten what was the reason behind that feeling and then he goes on to say how it affects your entire being not only your being but also your deeds also your actions because we are what we do our being is constituted by our actions so it affects not only our being our being in the world our existence how we organ organize ourselves in the way we go about in life but also what we do and what we do this question is related to how we are linked or how we communicate with others how we are connected or how we choose to connect ourselves with others this is what wordsworth means when he says that this does not have a trivial or slight influence on that best portion of a good man's life his little nameless unremembered acts of kindness and of love nor less i trust to them i may have owed another gift of aspect more sublime that blessed mood in which the burden of the mystery in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened sometimes when we are sad when we are lonely we tend to think that life is a mystery and this mystery becomes a burden and the heavy weary weight of this mystery that is caused by the unintelligibility and apparent 
indescribability of events happening around us, this burden is lightened. So it becomes a bit easy to carry this weight. That serene and blessed mood in which the affections gently lead us on, the affections that nature has for us, the affections that we have for nature lead us to a serene and blessed mood. The word blessed has religious connotations. That serene and blessed mood in which the affections gently lead us on until the breath of this corporeal frame and even the motion of our human blood almost suspended. So this is a circumlocutory, a roundabout way of saying that this blessed mood and serenity which nature affectionately leads us to stays till the end, stays till the day we die, until the breath of this corporeal frame it's a poetic way of describing the body, corporeal frame, and even the motion of our human blood almost suspended. We are laid asleep in body and become a living soul. Wordsworth becomes very spiritual here because he seems to think that the body dies but the soul continues to live on. Wordsworth is of the opinion that death signifies only the death of the body and not the soul. So he believes in the existence of the soul in the first place. While with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy we see into the life of things. The power of harmony. This phrase implies that harmony, the state of unity, the state of being one is empowering. You feel the power of yourself, of the connection that you have with nature when you realize that all beings, all life forms are connected and that realization empowers you. That is what Wordsworth seems to say by the phrase power of harmony. And also human vision is rendered quiet and satiated and sublime by this realization. Once you realize that we are all united, there is no disquiet within the soul. There is no sound, there is no noise. Everything is rendered peaceful. You are at peace with yourself and with your existence and with nature. And that is what he means when he says, while with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony. Things have a life and it's only after we have experienced the power of harmony, we, we realize and we are able to observe the life that exists beyond everything in this universe. Every living thing, every non-living thing, all the atoms and molecules that constitute matter appear to be meaningful and infinite at the same time. 